You know, we are in a place that's been graded by the HLC a certain way. Uh, here's my microphone real quick. Right. So my next question for y'all is, how would your community be different without redlining? Uh -oh. Feel free to pass the mic. What y'all got? So what would be different is black people would have money. Our neighborhoods would look better. Uh, like we did this morning, if you zoom in over there, we picked up trash this morning. We went around the uh, we went around the corner, and one thing we would have black people would have money, the neighborhoods would look better, and in turn our youth would keep our youth would continue that tradition. Stuff done to me, done to people. Like, like you yes, get no like extra God benefits me, no, because like, you're white. But I just we oh, get no, no, no extra benefits. Sometimes though, I, mean, I can pull her by the police and play that white privilege. Maybe well. that. Just, maybe <laughs> maybe like, maybe. I'm, maybe. I'm talking about bills. I'm no, talking yeah, about bills. Like, I'm talking about living houses. Ownership is key. Renting a house ain't the same as owning a house. That's where community really comes from because when you buy a house, you there. You can't be kicked out. What's yours is yours. So if I buy a home in a redlined neighborhood, even though I may appear to be white, I may be redlined because of the location of the home. If you were to go buy a home in the same neighborhood, then it's, okay, are you being redlined because you're black? Or are you being redlined because the neighborhood is predominantly black? And how would your life be different without redlining? Mm, everything would be pretty much still be so anti-social. I think so? Yeah, that's not good. If you've grown up in this neighborhood and um, you had to deal with these certain kind of, yeah, like I, I understand that. Yeah, I get not, that. But me, my husband, and our kids, we all always, struggle. But, yeah. We all struggle the same paycheck, as my neighbor paycheck. does. If you say, okay, this neighborhood here, Dunbar, heart of the city, right here, historically black neighborhood, in 1939, the homes there were anywhere between five, 10, maybe 20 years old at most. They were brand new houses, okay? Why was that red line? Because the neighborhood was predominantly black. I'm a scientist, a research maker scientist, oh, and I'm cool. going to interview the community members around redlining, communities, okay. and the impact they have on their lives. Can you be part of the process? I am really sorry, but we are on our way to a meeting. It's so okay, we're not yeah. able to stop, but that's awesome that yeah. you're doing that. Thank yes. you. Have a great day, y'all. Really that white privilege does exist, but only for certain certain communities. Like, I, we've grown up in these kind of communities that we're in right now, okay? And um, I can guarantee you there is no white privilege here. Like, I struggle just as much as my neighbor. <laughs> Birds don't fly backwards. I'm what would your community, where you're born, where you're raised, look like without redlining? What would it be like? Um. I think there'd be a lot more diverse opportunities for people of all types. Now, there were other factors that could have been used by the people who made these determinations, such as a lack of sidewalks, a lack of infrastructure. Well, that's public policy. That has nothing to do with how risky are you going to be as a person I'm going to lend to, how risky are you going to be? I don't know that. These were all folks who made the effort to move to this neighborhood because they wanted to be homeowners. Um, we moved over to this house that there was gunshots going on. You in the hood. Like you're three times. Yeah, that's, but that's, that's not hot. cool. That's, but that's hot. You yeah. in Missouri, that's yeah. just hot. That's normal. Yeah, but that, that shouldn't it's be normal. Right. It shouldn't, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be normal. No it matter where like, you're at, uh -huh. it shouldn't be normal. So my question to you is, how would your life be different without things like racial relay lining and racial lines like truce? Because I, I was, I'm from California. Uh -huh. I'm not really for sure about what a red lining is. Uh -huh. um, but I just, I just know for a fact that this community needs to stop the violence. We need more love in the world, understanding, um, and just, just peacefulness. So my kids should be able to go outside, outside and play. And yeah. like my kids should be able to go to a, um, a public school and get accreditation and a diploma. Like I didn't, I, yeah, I didn't have, I had. I think it'd just be a, it'd be a lot different. Like it's hard to put into words how it would uh, really seem. Uh -huh. uh, 
if there wasn't redlining in the community. Like I didn't, I, yeah, I didn't have, I had, I had to go to an alternative school for my diploma to mean anything. So even though I made straight A's and did all that, it didn't matter because the, the, the district, uh, Kansas City, the whatever, Jackson, did not have accreditation. So I had to leave and my kids shouldn't have to have to do with that. And they don't have to in these neighborhoods. So what do you imagine your life would be like without redlining? I think it would be very different. One of the things that we see among families here in our community as people have been pushed out further into our community, one of the things that we've seen really suffer is our educational systems. Um, our schools are very under-resourced and as they become more and more diverse, it seems like the funds are more and more scarce. Um, we also live in a rather transient community. As gentrification has happened downtown, we've seen people be pushed out towards us. And so we've seen a lot of gentrification happen even in our area. So we're seeing rise in homelessness. We're seeing rise in things like redlining even here in our own community now. How would your life, your initial life be different if this wasn't redlining? <laughs> I don't even take know. Some of these Man, people and put them over in Prairie Village. Go I'd be sleeping peacefully at night. County and living in their nice three I wouldn't be worrying about my kids. So Raytown was a, a bedroom community for a long time. It was a predominantly white community. Uh, but over time, that has uh, slowly changed, especially because of gentrification. In addition, you have things like uh, policies that are being made in the uh, state legislature, which has impacted uh, realities like um, homelessness. So one of the policies that was recently done uh, made it illegal for um, unhoused persons to be able to sleep or stay on public property. So uh, that reality has pushed a lot of them out of the urban core and further into the suburbs away from uh, the kind of economic resources that downtown often holds. That's, if we were, if the neighborhoods were as cohesive as they are like in suburbs, like you said, direct redlining where we made a choice to specifically segregate blacks, white, and foreigners from each other. Um, life without that, I see life with positive character. And redlining is the diminishment of opportunities for economic flourishing and uh, life for everyone. Um, and so part of, I think, one of the benefits of, of doing away with redlining and the impact of that is that it would be something that it creates uh, human flourishing across for everybody, economic opportunity for everybody. But life without redlining is life with good character. And life with good character basically means we become one. No matter what the religion is, no matter what the um, socioeconomic status is, no matter how the wind blows, the wind is only as strong as the forces behind it. If we had good force between all of our communities, there's nothing that we cannot do. So life without redlining is that force, is that character of people actually supporting us. So what would your life be like without redlining? Man, so that's a loaded question. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go this route. In order to say what life without redlining means, life without uh, that that racial power uh, struggle or, or uh, lack of power, right? Like my parents was one of the ones that kind of did a, uh, a flight out of the inner city at a certain time for safety reasons, for education reasons, right? So we went to South Kansas City. And even in that community, I met an old lady who said, well, we were the first black people in this community. And when I moved here, they didn't want me here. The realtor who sold me the house lost their job. Uh, and they, they threw rocks and, 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 and TP my, my house all the time. And this was like in the 60s and 70s. And so to think of a, like a world without that, it's totally different because you talk about housing market. My grandmother has a house still to this day where if you take that and it's right, not, not far from here, but if you take that same house and move it west, maybe a couple of miles, it'll be worth 
10 times the value to me it's kind of it's, it's fantasy to, to think of even try to go and think of like what would the world be mm -hmm. like without redlining That's i think good, it'll be right? amazing it'll be it'll be it'll be equitable um we would nearly i think i think the country as a whole would be much better off and so i'm intentional about bringing my son down here and you know i'm doing because we don't necessarily live in this particular area but i but i and i always explain to them there's nothing wrong with with you or with us. There's something wrong with the system and how it was built uh, for us, right? Or not not for us, rather. So my final Ooh. question today is, what does your community need? Um, better direction for the youth. Uh, I feel like the youth is misdirected. I feel like there's too many things that people find okay that aren't okay. Um, I feel like if there's people, because and a lot of that is because a lack of father figure or a lack of uh, guidance. So I feel like I don't know how exactly that would be fixed, but fixing that, you know, our youth, because that's what, that's what it is.